So, well, hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day five of Food is Climate Week, written by Glenn Merzer, who is here to introduce today's special guest. Hi, AJ. Nice to see that you're in your backyard. <laughs> yes, in the desert. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So what we've been doing this week is for the first two minutes of every show, I'm doing a climate lesson just for two minutes. And then we get to the main feature of the day, Chef Karen Osborne today. All right. So today's two minute lesson on climate, which is that there are two sources of greenhouse gases. Uh, and the, this is terminology from my friend, Dr. Silas Rao. There's the killing machine and there's the burning machine. And what we always hear about in the media is the burning machine. The burning machine is all the burning of fossil fuels. The burning of fossil fuels for transportation, for heating, for energy generation, for manufacturing. And for the last 30 years, that's all we hear about. And they've been trying to reduce fossil fuel consumption for the burning machine. And we burn more fossil fuels now than we did 30 years ago. So clearly it's not working. Now it is a good thing to, trans to, um, to make the transition to solar panels and, and wind generation, but currently solar gives us 4% of our energy, wind gives us eight or 9% of our energy. So we're a long way away. Clearly we're not gonna solve the problem doing the, trying the same thing over and over again. The, um, the killing machine, that refers to all the um, greenhouse gases that come from animal agriculture. That means all the deforestation, like what's happening now in the Amazon, chopping down trees in order to graze cows. And it's a tremendous amount of carbon that goes into the atmosphere from deforestation. Pasture maintenance fires every year to, to burn everything that the cows don't eat methane from the cows and from other ruminant animals, um, uh, nitrous oxide and methane from the animal waste, um, animal respiration. We have 25 billion farmed animals in the world breathing out carbon dioxide. So uh, the soil destruction from, from these pasture maintenance fires and deforestation, everything we're doing to the oceans with industrial fishing. So when you add all that up, according to a published paper by Dr. Silas Rao, it's 87% of greenhouse gases. But clearly, even if tomorrow we had all our, all our electricity from solar, we would still have the, the, all the greenhouse gases from animal agriculture. So we still wouldn't get to carbon neutral. We would still be increasing um, greenhouse gases. But if tomorrow we all went vegan and we, we got the, we, the grazing land back and, and put the forest that AJ put in her backyard, if we can have all the forest back and, and, and have healthy oceans, we could sequester enough carbon dioxide to make up for the airplanes and the cars and the manufacturing plants. And that's why the only solution to the climate emergency is a global transformation to a vegan world. And speaking of vegans, I give you now a great vegan chef, Karen Osborne. And let me read to you now uh, something about Karen. She's a gourmet raw food Ayurvedic and macrobiotic chef and instructor. She's a licensed food for life instructor for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Uh, and she's a personal chef and registered yoga teacher. She teaches yoga for bone health online, and her mission is to keep people living meaningfully independent lives as long as possible. Uh, her website is myfoodfitnessandfun.com, and she's also got a Facebook site. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Osborne. Thanks, Glenn, for that introduction, and I love the book. The book is it's just so, it's common sense, but it's things that people haven't thought about, and, and it just, it's entertaining. Um, great read. People should read it. Okay. 
Thank you, Karen. Sure, and thank you, Chef AJ, for having a week of Food is Climate. So yes, excited. thank you. I can't wait to see you do latkes because that is amazing without oil. Yeah, it's my version of it. That's the beauty of making your own food. You can make it how you like it, right? So um, I just want to tell you a little bit about what I do before I get into the cooking. Um, it, like you heard a lot of what I do from what Glenn said, but um, what, I, what I'm going to talk about today is how the um, nutrition and the yoga work together to um, reduce the risk of fracture. And that's what we all want. Because um, whether you have osteoporosis or not, the fractures happen when you fall. So like yoga works on balance and um, a whole lot of other things to, to make it less likely that you will fracture. But uh, I'm going to talk about the, the yoga and the food part. But how I got into this, um, just real quick, like my oldest child is uh, over 33. So it was over 33 years ago when I was in the hospital, uh, pregnancy had gone great. And I was just looking forward to taking home a healthy baby and starting a new phase of my life. And then they uh, wanted to keep me there and do all these tests for like lupus and uh, leukemia and stuff like that. And I was just like, um, feeling fine. And I was like, mm, I don't think so. So I just kind of intuitively knew that was not the path I wanted to go down and, uh, signed myself out of the hospital saying that if I died on the way home, I was responsible and, uh, kind of never looked back. I kind of had the mindset that food, whatever you put into your body, um, mattered. So, because my grandmother um, was way ahead of her time, I think, and always uh, talked to us about that. And, um, but still I was just, it was a journey. Um, so from the time I was six years old until um, about 1998 and 99, something like that, um, I would get antibiotics like every other month. I was sick with nothing major, but like sinus infections or strep throat. And I mean, that's nothing major, but it's miserable. So uh, one, one time I had five rounds of different antibiotics and the sinus infection just wouldn't go away. And someone said, you need to go see a nutritionist. And um, she recommended one that <laughs> Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo, we went to the same church, but we didn't know each other at that time. And so I did, I went to see her and we made a few little changes to my diet. I never liked meat in my life, I could always uh, know what I was eating and, and it just was wrong. Um, it, meat's just like a carrier for flavors and you can add all those flavors to your vegetables. But um, I, there were a few things, I, I ate cheese and now cheese, haven't had it in over 20 years and it really smells horrible to me. But um, I got off of dairy and a few other changes and um, haven't needed antibiotics since and haven't really been sick since. If I just get a little sinus drip, I know how to get rid of it with food. Um, and so I switched my family to this way of eating. And uh, like, I wasn't gonna make something different for my kids. I wasn't gonna feed them food that would harm them. I was really honest with them all the time, to, like why we were eating this way. Um, and just never had a problem with it. And my youngest daughter in college uh, kind of got known as the mother of her dorm because if kids were sick, she could heal them uh, with lentils and sweet potatoes. And um, it's just, it's just uh, my blood work now at 60 is uh, better than it's been. Well, I feel better now than I did at 20. So it uh, works for me. Um, I've taken all of the knowledge from the different uh, different ways of cooking, and I do the Karen diet. It's like some macrobiotic, some Ayurvedic, high raw. I was raw for 16 years, um, and and really uh, felt a lot lot better. And then I started not being able to handle a lot of the nuts and seeds, so then I wasn't eating enough calories. So that's why I added in sweet potatoes and beans, things that you wouldn't eat raw and it's working for me. So um, then I got into, probably for selfish reasons, um, 
bone health because uh, I will never want to go on any of those bone drugs. And uh, so there is another way. Um, and uh, a lot of people uh, don't realize you know, how, how this works, the, the mechanism. Um, and what it is, is we have two layers of bone. We have like the, the outer layer, the, um, the smooth cortical layer. And then in the inner layer is like a spongy, uh, the trabecular layer of bone. And the, the outer layer is smooth, kind of the same for everyone, but the inner layer is something that you have control over. And I just want to show one picture to illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to tell you how uh, to mineralize that, that inner layer. So if you could see that. Uh, it's this upside one, down, Karen. Karen is upside down. Yeah, I just want to show the picture. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So the, the, uh, this one is porous and this one is mineralized. So if you think about this inner layer of your bone as like a ladder, this lattice work in here, if the rungs are closer, well, if they're farther apart, if the rungs are far apart and somebody heavy steps on a top rung, it's likely to break, right? So if you uh, have those rungs closer together, it's more supportive and less likely to break. Well, it's the same, the same concept in the inner uh, part of your bone. And how we control that is we uh, can make sure that that inner part of the bone is mineralized. Uh, we have cells that build bone, osteoblasts, and we have cells that break down bone, osteoclast. And it's a process, we're always building bone and breaking it down. And up to about the age of 30, you're building it faster than you're breaking it down. And then later on, you start breaking it down faster than you build it up. So um, you think, well, let's just stop those bone cells that break it down, right? And then you solve the problem. Well, that's what one of the drugs does, one class of the drugs, but it, with the drugs come a whole lot of problems. So um, if you think about like uh, the vertebrae in your cervical spine and your head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. So if you had a little micro fracture in one of those vertebrae and um, the, it collapsed, like the fracture collapse is gonna propel your head a little bit forward and then it's gonna be heavier on your spine than that 10 to 12 pounds. It's also gonna make it more likely that if you have another micro fracture uh, it's it's going to be more likely to collapse that one, and then your head goes even further forward and gets uh, heavier, and so on. So if you have the bones, the cells that um, break down the bone, they go in when you have that tiny little microfracture, and they smooth it out. They resorb the uh, the protein and the minerals that your bones are made of. Uh, your bones actually the Calcium and phosphorus are the main minerals in the bone, but you need a whole bunch more. And I'll get to that in a minute. Like you need um, all these uh, nutrients to work together to uh, increase the strength of your bone. Like you need, um, you, you do need calcium, but you need B6 to make the hydrochloric acid, which you need to absorb the calcium. Vitamin D helps you absorb the calcium. Um, K2 helps you, it activates the protein that moves the calcium from your arteries into your bones and your teeth. So um, it's not just calcium that you need for your bones. And uh, plant-based protein is great, more uh, absorbable or bioavailable than acidic animal protein. Uh, so what happens is um, after those bone cells that break, uh, smooth it out, resorb the minerals and stuff, then the, uh, the osteoblast can take all that material and lay down smooth bone on the damaged sites. So um, when, like there's all kinds of uh, problems with the drugs, there's the kind that suppress the osteoclasts and uh, they can, um, give you digestive issues. If you have digestive issues, you're not gonna absorb any of the nutrients. You could take in all uh, healthy food, but uh, it wouldn't do you any good. Um, and, and then like the first six to 12 months after you start taking one of those drugs that suppresses the osteoclast, the osteoblasts are still working, 
but um, they slow down. And after about two to five years, they just say, hmm, nothing's being broken down. We don't need to work anymore. So they kind of stop, stop working. And then uh, the kind of drug that uh, boosts the um, osteoblast is forcing um, the osteoblast at a, uh, an unnatural rate. And it can cause a lot of bone pain. It can cause uh, interference with brain and heart function. Um, some of them are, uh, depending on which drug you take, it's uh, not recommended that you stay on it for more than one or two years. There's all kinds of uh, side effects. And um, it's just like too uh, dangerous of a thing to just throw out to everybody. It's like, if there's a way to do this without drugs, they can be your last resort, but I, I'm all for that. So um, I did study with Lauren Fishman, uh, the yoga for osteoporosis. And that is what I teach along with how, how the food works here. Um, so the mechanism is after you stress your bones, like if you press your wrists together, you're gonna feel uh, your, your wrist, your hands, whatever. In the yoga for uh, bone health, we stress all of our bones. And um, after eight seconds, this protein matrix comes out of the cell and attracts all the minerals from your bloodstream and hardens that inner, uh, inner part of your layer of your bone. So you want to have enough protein, which all of these plant foods have protein. And then you want to give, give your body the minerals that it can attract and harden your bones. So you don't really need to know what's in everything. There's just eat the rainbow. Every uh, different color food has different nutrients in it and you're going to be fine. Um, but uh, that all this is uh, just so uh, plant food, healthy, delicious, and uh, let's get let's get cooking. Okay, so we're gonna start with the potato latkes. I'm gonna make two recipes from the book, and then in honor of Hanukkah, the potato latkes. Just my version, um, and what I have done in advance is shred some zucchini in my food processor, and the potato. Um, I use the uh, red potato instead of the traditional um, russet potato. It's, I like, I don't peel it. I like the color in there and it's a little stickier. Um, I'm just going to go ahead oops, and pour it into a, you could use a nut milk bag or a, uh, I'm using a produce bag that I use for a nut milk bag. I'm just going to lower my screen, see if you can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna put the potato and so you can see there's a little, little starch. They're less starchy than the rest of potatoes, but that's okay because we're gonna add starch, potato starch back in. So I put the potatoes and the zucchini. I don't peel that either. There's a lot of nutrients in the skin. Just gonna put it in a bag, produce bag. And I'm gonna squeeze it out into the sink a lot of people, like originally, I think they squeezed it onto a bowl and poured off the water and then uh, put the starch back in. But we're adding starch, so we don't really need this. Squeeze a lot of that liquid out, and then I'm just going to put it into my bowl. And then I'm going, so the, um, the zucchini and the potatoes have potassium and vitamin C, which the vitamin C uh, actually helps activate and assimilate minerals that you need for your bones. And it's needed for collagen production, all that connective tissue. Um, and the potassium neutralizes bone depleting metabolic acids. So uh, that reduces the loss of calcium from your bones. Uh, so I've got that. And then I have some ground flaxseed. I just ground it in my uh, try best. You could use a coffee grinder, spice grinder, um, a magic bullet, one of those little blenders. And um, this is going to uh, soak up the liquid. A lot of people uh, make a flax egg and it's the egg substitute, but there's no need to add liquid to it and make this egg because it's going to soak up the liquid from our um, vegetables here. 
And it also adds omega-3 fatty acids, which reduce inflammation. And then I'm going to add some chickpea flour. Here we're going to add some protein. And also it's going to be like a binder. Um, but the neat thing about this is uh, chickpea flour is being studied uh, as uh, a substance that can help reduce acrylamide in processed foods. Now, I don't eat processed foods. Acrylamide is cancer uh, causing. And if you heat potatoes or flowers at a high temperature, especially if you fry it in oil, um, you're going to produce acrylamide. So this is, uh, it's going to bind this together. It's also going to hopefully be a little protective here. It's gonna make it a little cakey texture when we bake them. And then the other, traditionally you have onions. I've just diced some onions, yellow onions. And I'm adding a little bit of nutritional yeast. Um, that's optional. This recipe works without it. Just adds a little flavor. Um, also, I use the one that is unfortified because I think it tastes better and it doesn't, the fortified ones have synthetic vitamins and they're almost identical to natural vitamins, but not quite. And your body can react differently to them. You know, I, do you have a brand that you prefer, Karen? Because I, I agree with you because it's interesting because when I interview doctors, like for example, Dr. Furman says, have the unfortified. And Dr. Greger says has the fortified. So it's like, who do you listen to? But I do agree with you as a chef that I have found that the unfortified generally tastes better. It does. Yes. I, I get this uh, foods alive, which I think is really good. And there's also another one. I think Anthony's has one. And Sarah, I, Sari or sorry, I've tried that. It's very sorry, good. Yes, it's, funny, it's funny. Every time I go on YouTube, I see an ad for something called Nucci-licious. Is it really that much better? Does anyone know? You know, I, I haven't tried that one, but I did order it this time. It's not here yet, but it is supposed to be unfortified. When you taste it, would you let me know if it's really that good? I will. I appreciate that. Sure. All right. So uh, like I said, I'm going to add the potato starch back in and potato starch is a resistant starch. So it just really uh, goes through your um, body undigested, but it's going to help this uh, pull together. Just going to stir that in and then I'm going to add just a little bit of salt, but if you're not using salt, you don't need to You've just got like an eighth of a teaspoon. And we're going to save the baking powder for last. We're going to let this sit about 15 minutes and uh, let the flax soak up a lot of the liquid on here. It's going to hold together better. I've lined a cookie sheet. I'm only making half of the recipe, by the way. Um, I lined a cookie sheet with parchment paper and I'm going to preheat the oven to 375 and just let this sit and then I'll come back and add the baking powder because it's uh, like I make my own baking powder you can buy baking powder but sometimes it has to be you make your own baking powder I didn't know that was possible yes it's um one I just keep it in a little jar in my pantry and, um so it's like one part um baking soda and two parts cream of tartar. And that's all it is. You don't have to add any extra stuff. And I just put, I don't fill the jar, I just shake it. And, uh, and then just keep a little bit all the time. So it's ready when I need it. But um, the bake, the cream of tartar is an acid and a base. Um, and it just needs liquid to combine for the reaction. It's going to like puff up whatever you're baking. The baking soda is a base and needs the acid like from that cream of tartar. Um, but um, I'm putting it in last because I want it, I want to get them in the oven while that reaction is taking place. So we're just going to put this aside and preheat the oven. And go on to our next recipe, which is a kale collard and cabbage salad. Now this one is, is like one of my oldest recipes, but it's, it's still good. Um, 
It's got a lot of greens, the greens, all these greens have um, the vitamin C, the magnesium, uh, calcium, uh, and in different proportions, they have got a folate. So um, like I said, the calcium, you need the calcium, I mean, the, uh, of course you need the calcium for your bones, uh, but the um, folate lowers inflammation, inflammation, the beta carotene helps uh, produce um, hydrochloric acid and uh, the magnesium regulates the mineral metabolism. So what I have done, just totally healthy for your bones. Um, I've already uh, shifted the kale and the collard greens, one bunch each. But I just wanted to show the way I did that is I took each leaf and just pulled it off of the stem. You want to save the stems because there's a lot of nutrients in that stem. Um, I like to chop them up fine and then just uh, put them in with my beans when I cook them in the instant pot or just toss them on the salad raw. Uh, and then I stack the leaves. I'm going to put this down again. So I just uh, stacked the leaves and rolled them. And then, okay. And then just cut into ribbons. This is a chiffonade. So having them so fine, we're gonna massage them and break down the cell wall. So it's like cooking them without heat, preserving all the, the enzymes in this food. And like I said, I'm using the different greens for the different proportions of the different minerals in them. Um, collard greens are like the best form of calcium. They have so much calcium. And then, I have uh, cabbage. So these are all cruciferous vegetables, totally cancer protective, good for your uh, cardiovascular system and everything, really good for your bones. Uh, the cabbage adds a little sweetness. I've shredded it uh, with the slicer blade, not the shredder. People sometimes don't really understand why I do that. But if you look at, at a cabbage, it's already kind of uh, spiralized and all you need to do is slice it, um, slice it down. You could do it with a knife. A lot of times I, I do things, I have all these gadgets, but I just use the knife because I just want to wash the knife and not all the gadgets. But um, this is with the thin uh, slicer blade comes out really, really nice. And then we're just gonna mix this up. And I'm going to add just a little bit of lemon juice and salt. I just want to thank uh, someone in the chat, Maria, who bought the book. She says she hopes it makes a difference. Just so you know, if you buy the book, you can get bonuses by sending your receipt to this email that is posted in the show note and the chat. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of lemon juice. And then, huh. I lost my salt. One sec, sorry, here it is, all right. So we're going to add, I what I put in. Anyway, I don't put too much, but if, if you're not using salt, you can use salt here. It helps to break down the, uh, the cell wall. Um, and then we're gonna pour, we're gonna pour it out. We're gonna pour out the lemon juice and pour out the salt. More. So we're just gonna massage it until it kind of breaks down. And then we're going to pour it off because it's a little bitter. And I'm, I'm going to pour it into a glass because there's a lot of nutrients in it and it's not 
bad. So it's really, I think it's good to drink, but it's not um, what I want in this recipe. So then we're gonna add back in a little more lemon juice. You can see it's just wilting down, breaking down. You know, I forgot to say we're having, we have um, something really exciting going on here in Austin uh, that I am involved with and it's called Carisha Community. And it was started by a, um, an MD here, a family practice physician. And uh, it's a like a mind, body, spirit center healthcare, like preventive care and uh, regular care. We're gonna have like nutrition and food uh, cooking classes, uh, yoga, uh, traditional healthcare, all kinds of uh, everything. And the, the neat thing about this is um, it's, it's going to be accessible to everyone. So it um, doesn't matter your age, your race, your gender, your socioeconomic status, it's going to be accessible. And uh, we already have enough, we've got uh, raised money for, um, bought the land and uh, got architectural plans, all the permits, site plans, but um, now we're raising money uh, for, the, uh, the construction loan, you have to have money to borrow money. So, but the neat thing about this, there are investors, big investors, but also it's gonna be owned by the community. So there is a crowdfunding. Um, you can look at carisha.org if you'd like to own a piece of it, but it, even if you, you're not interested in investing, you should look at that and read the story, it's beautiful. All right, so this is kind of broken down. I'm gonna pour off some of that liquid. And in your bio, you talk about studying nutritional endocrinology. What is that? Yes, so we um, look at the relationship between uh, nutrition and uh, hormone imbalances uh, or endocrine imbalances. It's like uh, maybe nutritional deficiencies cause hormone imbalances. And we're not just talking about sex hormones. I mean, hormones control, they're the messengers of life, like control every function in your body. So um, fix it. You can fix it most of the time. You know, most of the time when people have troubles, they have... Um, you can fix it with lifestyle changes, like the food you eat, getting enough rest, getting enough exercise, having fun, um, and, and mindset, uh, controlling your stress, managing your stress. But and if you, know, you try all that and that doesn't work, then we uh, investigate further to see what the imbalances are and how we can fix it with food and herbs and stuff like, instead of throwing a pill at every eel. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's really it's really interesting. It's like uh, being a detective. All right, so I'm going to this avocado is pretty big, so I'm not sure I need the whole thing. But I'm going to put this half. And avocado is actually a good healthy fat, but we're not um, gonna, you don't get much in each serving. And then I'm going to add back in some more lemon juice. Oh, that oven's ready. Or not the oven. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. And then I'm gonna add garlic granules. I use garlic granules here instead of fresh garlic because it's less of a bite, more of like a cooked flavor. 
And I love mountain rose herbs, garlic granules. You could use garlic powder. <coughs> Whatever. And the other is onion powder. So we are gonna have onions in here. This is just gonna bump up the flavor. Also mountain rose herbs. And you can put a little salt at this time too, if, you, if you're using salt, if you're not, just leave it out. So what I've already done, I julienned a red onion and uh, soaked it in lemon juice. So what this does is just make it, uh, make it yummy actually. So I'm gonna pour off the lemon juice. It, it uh, like neutralizes that bite of a raw onion. So I'm gonna pour off the juice because it's pretty strong with the, um, what came out of the onion. Karen, Trina wants to know who you're studying endocrinology with. Yes, uh, Dr. Rita Marie Loscalzo. Um, it's uh, the Institute of Nutritional Endocrinology. Thank you. How were you able to get your family to go vegan? Uh, I made the food. <laughs> and uh, it was um actually just the kids were on board they were young they'd eat what i made i was lucky uh, but when i first started doing this i would make them birthday cakes you know they weren't deprived of anything um and they knew why we were doing it because they had feelings for the animals too but um the first birthday cakes I made were really, really beautiful, but they were really, really horrible. So after, after you know, I went to Cafe Gratitude and when I was in San Francisco and... Oh, excuse me. Question. Thank you. It's uh, getting cold here. It's in the 70s. <laughs> <gosh>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like summertime. So I'm just... Uh, just massaging this, it's breaking down even further. It's getting all the flavors melded. Uh, but I went to Cafe Gratitude and uh, and I loved their food and their desserts. And I bought the cookbooks and started, um, and then like this was, I guess 20, 20 years ago or more. But um, just started experimenting and learned how to make all the things and make, you know, alter them to my liking. And I went to Raw Spirit one year and I saw Sherry Soria uh, do her presentation. And at the end, she, and she says, come play in my kitchen. And I was like, ah, that's what I need to do. So the next year I was there and um, just a life-changing experience. Um, but, uh, then a, a year or two later, I was doing a presentation at Royal Spirit. So that was fun. And where's that located at? Uh, they were, uh, the festivals, um, it, one time it was in Sedona, one time it was, the time I presented, it was in, I think, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, not sure they're happening anymore. Okay, so this is Salad Lake. And then I'm just going to add in my pretty uh, red onions. This might be more than I need to have a pretty big one. Right. And then just get them all incorporated. Now ah, we can use them all, they're good. And put it in a bowl. Now we have a nice, nutritious, bone supportive salad. Tell us what you eat in a day, Karen. Our guests always love to tell that, and our audience loves to hear it. Uh, sure. Um, so a lot of times when I, I teach yoga in the morning, I'll just have like a piece of fruit before I go teach. And if it's not a teaching day, I will 
um, have a salad, actually. I just love salad. I love the crisp. Um, and it's not just lettuce. It's all the things. There's beets, um, red bell peppers, cucumbers, whatever I have, carrots. Um, and then I put natto on my salad. I make that. It's like, uh, it's fermented soybeans. And that's the, the best form, of, vegan form of vitamin K2 to, um, to get the uh, calcium out of your arteries into your bones and your teeth. Um, and then I do a little bit of, um, I'm usually in a hurry. So I just put like a, I keep yogurt that I make and um, just put a little drop of yogurt on it and then spices, whatever spices I feel like and mix that up and it kind of becomes a dressing. And that just makes me feel so satisfied. Right. And, uh, and I make such a big salad. Usually I'll only eat twice a day. Uh, and then like for dinner, I'll have some kind of beans and greens and vegetables. Um, like I can do the gourmet stuff, but I don't do it for myself all the time. I'm just totally happy eating. Love Japanese yam, Japanese sweet potatoes and any kind of beans. Keeping me healthy. Do you teach yoga in person, online or both? Uh, I was teaching in person until COVID and, that, and then we just moved online. Uh, the buildings where I was teaching are not letting people come in now. So it, it's fun. It's uh, it's online and this way I can get people from all over too, all over the country. And it's like a supportive community. Um, some of the, uh, like one person said that is in my class, um, she can't, she knows how to do it. Like if I have to be, I had a, a sick dog a few months ago and um one time i had to go let it out and and i just asked her to take over so she could totally do it but she, it's the motivation for her is to be with this community and, and she says she won't do it by herself so she uh, really enjoys like everybody enjoys the community but here's our salad and i'm going to bring back the uh Potato lapkeys are better. I don't think it's weird at all to eat salad for breakfast because I recommend people eat vegetables for breakfast and savory breakfast. And if you've ever been to the True North Health Center, everybody eats salad and vegetables for breakfast there. And even if they're eating oatmeal and fruit, everybody takes salad and vegetables as well. Yeah, that's, that's great. I just noticed for myself, if I don't eat that, I'm still hungry. If I eat that, I don't need anything else. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, oops. Yeah, I forgot. Here's my baking powder in my little jar that I keep. All right, so I'm gonna add the baking powder. I am making half of the recipe. It's going to be half a teaspoon. So cool. I never heard of making your own baking, baking powder before. Yeah. It just doesn't need all those other things that some companies put in there. Especially I, I, I buy baking powder and baking soda salt free. You can get them, but not at every store. Cool. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, don't, uh, don't make a whole lot. Like right now I'm into baking, so I'm using it, but it, um, it stays fresher if you just make it up as like, I don't know, every month or so. What's your favorite yoga pose? Uh, geez, I like uh, Warrior 2. There's a whole bunch of things that we do with Warrior 2 that work a whole bunch of different uh, different bones have you ever done anything called yin yoga no um i've done restorative but yeah, i um, have not done that that's it well i think we we did have a class of yin yoga in um our yoga training yes that's my favorite kind i call it lazy man's yoga because you never get off the mat <laughs> I did uh, study um, 
with Judith Hanson Lester, the uh, restorative yoga. That was really neat too. I love restorative yoga. I call that napping. <laughs> yoga Nidra, you like that? I love that. Oh my God. I love anything where you're laying down, you know, massages, you know, yeah. you know movies and I haven't been to a movie since before the pandemic but before that you know movies were basically laying down with the recliners yeah which and I'd always fall asleep and never see the movie but I had good rest cool all right so I stirred the baking powder in and then I'm just going to drop it by a quarter cup onto the baking sheet And you can make them as big or as small as you like. These are actually getting a little bit overstuffed. Um, we're going to mash them down with the fork. And then the baking time will depend on how um, thick you have them. I'm just, I'm going to put this down and I'm just going to mash them down. So the thinner, obviously, the thinner you make them, the faster they're going to bake. Do you ever do them in the air fryer or maybe you don't have an air fryer? I don't have an air fryer. That's what, what is with you guys this week? Yesterday's guest, Alexandria, didn't even have an Instant Pot. Oh, I had three Instant Pots. <laughs> No, the air fryer, I just, uh, I think it's like one more appliance <laughs> and, and not a lot of counter space. <laughs> so I, I'm curious to try it, but and maybe one day. Right. So then I'm just going to put these in the oven and set my timer. But I've already had, got some prepared because we're not going to be here when those are done. And um, I've just got some of my plant-based yogurt. Or you could do a plant-based sour cream. Um, just going to top it. And you might want some little green onions. And we have our potato latkes. And this is similar to something I'm making tomorrow on our uh, So Many Cooks in the Kitchen show. But it's going to be with sweet potatoes. What? Tell us about that show. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, usually we end up being about a dozen uh, Food for Life instructors. And then one Saturday a month, we have a So Many Cooks in the Kitchen show. And we go from kitchen to kitchen all over the country, even Abu Dhabi. We have someone in Abu Dhabi, uh, you know, different parts of the world. And it's just so much fun. Uh, we all cook around a theme each month. And it's just fun to see what everybody comes up with. So is it, is it, is, is this something that we can watch or is it, how did, how does yeah. it? So there's a, um, uh, we have a Facebook page. Uh, it's also on YouTube. Uh, it's on Facebook Live and it's uh, so many cooks.com uh, web, web page, too. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. It's a lot so of fun. How many chefs do you have in each show and how long is the show? The show uh, is mostly a couple of hours. Um, usually we have 12 or 13 chefs cooking. Um, you know, there's like over 300 of us. So it's not always the same chefs. I've so it's all the different PCRM cooking instructors. Yes, that's a lot that's of them. A, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. I've been in every single one. And um, it's uh, it's always available on our Facebook page live. If, I mean, like if you if you don't make it live, you can see it later. But if you're there live, you can ask questions and answer. We'll get answers at the end of the show. We have a Q&A. That's great. What time is it at? Um, it is 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
So it's right against my show. So don't watch. I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> we do have another PCRM cooking instructor on tomorrow. She's on after. She's actually going to be cooking on our show and then on after. Well, that's right. Because my show is two. Your, thank you. I forgot for the next two days. My show is 2 p.m. Pacific time because we start the GI Health Summit tomorrow. So, yes, you're right. Cody is going to be on um, with her family tomorrow on this show. Bunch of kids. That'd be great. And if you just want to sit down and smile, they do a kids in, in the kitchen cooking show every other month. And her kids, uh, this last show, it, it's it's on our same page, but that last show was so funny. It just um the kids are adorable. You can just watch watch them make their recipes. All right, so I'm gonna get on to uh, the last recipe which is really quick and it's a mock tuna salad and uh, our base is garbanzo beans. There's a lot of different ways to make a mock tuna salad, but a lot of them out there, the plant-based um, use like a um, tofu mayonnaise or a cashew mayonnaise, some kind of adding some fat back in. And I just wanted one where you don't do that. So I created one. Um, and what I did, I uh, cooked these beans, the garbanzo beans in my instant pot. And um, then I started mashing them when they were warm because they're easier to mash when they're warm. So you could put them in a um, food processor, but you don't want them, you still want texture. So you just pulse it so you have more control. Uh, and then I, instead of adding uh, mayonnaise, oh, I have the cook water, the aquafaba from the garbanzo beans. And we're only gonna use that if we need to. So um, what I'm gonna do is add to the base the things that you would put in a normal tuna salad. So I've got some lemon juice and some apple cider vinegar. If you don't use vinegar, you can use double the lemon juice. And then I have some dill. You can put whatever, like, whatever you like in your tuna salad, put it in this mock tuna salad. I have a uh, kelp powder, which is gonna give it that taste of the sea. And then um, since I put more liquid in there with the vinegar and the lemon juice, I might not need any of the aquafaba, but I'm just going to mash it all together. With a potato masher, you could use a fork. Or like I said, pulse it in the food processor. And that's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to switch to a spoon. Or how about a fork? All right. And then I'm just going to put in what I put in my uh, normal tuna salad before I was vegan. <laughs> 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 so I have uh, some red onion dice and celery. And parsley, I'm using flat leaf parsley. It's a little bit sweeter than the, the curly parsley, but they both work. And if you're using salt, you could add a little salt. And just mix it together. And you have a really quick and easy tuna, not tuna salad. And then what I like to do, you could put it on your favorite, um, favorite bread or crackers. You can stuff a bell pepper with it. Um, put it on a romaine leaf or any kind of lettuce leaf. But what I like to do is have it on a collard green, because like I said, collard greens have the most calcium. And I've got collards three ways here. So this is this is raw. I'm gonna just turn this down. Um, and then I have one that I froze, and you can see how it um, just froze it for about an hour. And and it gets more pliable. And for that one, I would do the same thing I'm gonna show you here. And then another way, some people if they need to work on their digestion or whatever, if they can't eat raw greens, uh, you can blanch the collard leaves. And usually when you blanch them, 
uh, you put them in the water for about three minutes, the hot water, but uh, you want it to have some substance to hold the, the pate. So I just did it for less than a minute. But the way I, you could stack these, stack some of the collard leaves. This one's pretty big. So I'm just gonna cut off the end of that stem and then just take a knife and kind of shave it. Big part. Down. You know, I just I just microwave the leaf for 30 seconds and it gets nice and soft. Oh, cool. <laughs> but you, can, you can shave it. If you want to, you can roll it with a rolling pin to break, break down that stem. So now it's pretty pliable. And I'm just going to fill it with my mock tuna salad. And this is really refreshing. This one and the uh, the kale, cabbage, and collards. It's good. I like, it's got all the flavors. It's got the onion for the pungent. It's got the the bitter greens, and then it has the cabbage is a little bit sweet. The lemon juice is sour. I put a little bit of salt in there, and your tongue is happy. All those taste buds. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold over the sides. And rolling is the hardest part for me. <laughs> it's all good. And I have lunch. <laughs> So like all these, these uh, nutrients, you know, are great for your bones. Um, the food is delicious, but the, uh, there can be a whole lot of uh, different causes for bone loss. It can be like hormonal, kids be digestive, um, pharmaceuticals can cause bone loss and stuff. Um, so like, even if, if it's something else besides lifestyle, most of the time it is just lifestyle. Fixing that lifestyle, you can fix it your bones and but if it's something else you can do this while you're addressing the problem and it will help uh it helps to help build bone while you're doing that um there's a time for the drugs like if and it's temporary like if you've had a fracture and um are in danger of another fracture we'll sure take the drugs while you're addressing the underlying problem but it's temporary that's great. Well, thanks. The food looks delicious. Thank you. Somebody's going to have a good meal at your house. That's for sure. Me. <laughs> so where can people connect with you? Yeah. Um, my website is myfoodfitnessandfun.com. And I am starting with three other amazing women. Uh, January 30th, we're going to start a, a, a small community of um people who have already uh, transitioned through to menopause. And uh, it's just gonna be a supportive uh, um, community where people are nurtured and can learn and support each other and just feel heard. And um, I'm gonna go over more of this, like how this all works. Um, and then we have, you're gonna work on mindset and, um, everything. It's a, just a place where you, they can achieve mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual balance. So if anybody is interested in that, uh, just send me a, a note on the contact form on my website, and I'll be happy to send you information. That's great. Are the, are the latkes done? Uh, they're not, where did I... And how do you serve them? We, we always ate them with applesauce. Yeah. Um, so these are the ones that I made before. They're still cooking the ones that I just made, uh, but they, I have, um, here, let's see. Is that okay? Oh my God, they look delicious. Just put a little bit of the plant-based yogurt on top, which tastes like sour cream to me. You could use a plant-based sour cream and some, sprinkle some green onions. But yeah, so the, re you know, I started making uh, zucchini pancakes. And then I, they, it reminded me of potato pancakes. So I thought, well, what would this be like if I put potato in there? And it is, it's just, uh, it's a little, it's not sweet, but it's a little sweeter than just plain 
potato. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you for sharing these wonderful recipes. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, it was the, my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 8 a.m. We start the GI Health Summit absolutely free for nine days. I think we have close to 50 doctors, most of them gastroenterologists that we're interviewing. And the show will be a little bit later for the next nine days during the summit. It will be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And tomorrow we have another wonderful Food for Life instructor that has contributed recipes to own your health, which if you get, go look in the show notes, you can get extra recipes for buying it and she'll be cooking with her kids. Thanks again, Karen. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you.